Previously, we practiced computation of theorem cohomology using definition by computing the cohomology of the real line. Now, in this video, we are gonna use the definition of theorem cohomology to compute the cohomology of the unit circle. That is not really the optimal way. Later, we will see how we can compute this cohomology group of the circle using the Maya-Viatora sequence. But for now, let's just practice using the definition. First of all, the circle is connected, so its H0 should be just R. Then next, observe that the circle is of dimension 1, so H2, H3, and higher cohomology of the circle must all vanish, thus we only need to compute H1. Our claim is that H1 of the circle is isomorphic to R, and that isomorphism is induced by the integration map. This map sends every one form tau on the circle to the integral of tau along the circle. We claim that this induces an isomorphism between the H1 cohomology group of the circle and R. In other words, this map is surjective to R, and the kernel is exactly the exact one form. Okay, so let's first prove surjectivity. Now this is an R-linear map, so it suffices to show that the image is not zero. In other words, we just need to find some one form omega such that the integral of omega over S1 is not zero. For this, let's remember our discussion on orientation and integration. Remember back then we have constructed a nowhere vanishing one form on S1. Where does this one form come from? Well, we look at the usual parametrization of the circle by the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Given by t is mapped to cosine t sine t. Then this one form omega is the one form that pulls back to dt. Now if we take this one form and integrate it over the circle, then that's just the same as integrating dt over the interval 0 to 2 pi. So that would give us 2 pi, which is non-zero. And thus, the image of this map is not zero, so it must be surjective. Alright, so we have proof surjectivity. Now, to get this isomorphism, we need to show that the kernel of this map is the image of D0, i.e. the exact one form. Recall that this map D0 sends every smooth function f in on S1 to the one form df. Now, by Stokes' theorem, integral of df over S1 is the same as integral of dtf over the closed disk. And this later is 0, because d squared is 0. So df lies in the kernel of this integration map. In other words, the image of d0, this exact one form, lie inside this kernel. Alright, so now let's prove the other direction. Let's say we have some one form tau that lies in this kernel. Then we can write tau as a multiple of the one form omega that we defined before. Remember, omega, the pullback of omega under this parameterization of the circle is just dt. So let's write tau as f omega for some smooth function f. The key idea of the proof is the following observation. We can observe that there is a bijective correspondence between smooth function on S1 and periodic functions of period 2 pi on R. The correspondence is given as follows. So if I have a smooth function G on S1, then G composed with this parametrization cosine T sine T gives me a periodic function G bar on R. Conversely, any periodic function g bar on R of period 2 pi must factor through this map, right? And thus it must induce some smooth function g on S1. Explicitly, this means that g bar is just the pullback of g. So the correspondence here is via pullback. This means, in particular, that the pullback map on one form must be injective. So let's see why that is. So let's suppose that these one forms pull back to the same thing. Observe that the pullback of this one form is just going to be the product of the pullback of f1, which is f1 bar, right, with the pullback of omega, which is dt. So for this pullback to be the same, we need f1 bar to be the same as f2 bar. 
But then that means that f1 must be equal to f2 by our discussion. Remember that f1 bar, fi bar, is just the extension of f1 as a, into a periodic function on the wall of r. So we must have this equality. And thus this pullback map must be injective on one form. So then our plan is as follows. To show that tau is exact, we will actually show that its pullback is exact. So we want to show that this is going to be equal to dg bar for some periodic function g bar. Why would this prove that uh, tau is exact? Well, because dg bar is just the pullback of dg, right? Because g bar is just the pullback of g. So if we can establish that tau pull back to dg bar, then that will imply that tau must be equal to dg and thus tau must be exact. Now observe that this pullback of tau is really just uh, f bar dt, right? It's the product of the pullback of f with the pullback of omega, so it's f bar dt. And for any g bar, dg bar is just g bar prime dt. So what we really want to show is that there exists some function g bar such that f bar is the derivative of g bar i.e. g bar is the antiderivative of f bar but isn't that trivial isn't that always the case that we can find an antiderivative of this f bar the same way that we constructed an antiderivative when we prove that h1 of the real line is trivial right now there is a subtle point here Yes, we can always construct an antiderivative this way, but we need to check that this antiderivative is periodic of period 2 pi so that it's the pullback of some function on S1. And that is why we use the hypothesis that tau lies inside the kernel of this map S1. And because tau lies inside the kernel, we know that this integral is zero, but this integral is really the integral of the pullback of tau over this interval 0 to 2 pi, right? So that's really just the integral from 0 to 2 pi of f bar dt. So this is trivial. All right, so now using that, now we want to show that g bar as defined, this antiderivative is periodic of period 2 pi, right? So let's take g bar of x plus 2 pi, and it's going to be this integral. We can split it out. Now this part, this part here is zero because of this. So this is zero. And this part here by periodicity of f bar, is just gonna be integral from zero to x of f bar, and that's just g bar. Thus we see that g bar is periodic of period two pi. So then we see that f bar has an antiderivative this means that the pullback of tau is going to be equal to dg bar and by injectivity of the pullback map, that means tau itself is going to be equal to dg, so tau is exact. And thus this shows that the kernel of the integration map uh, lies inside this image, i.e. every tau in this kernel must be exact. This concludes that the kernel of this integration map consists exactly of the exact one form, and thus this integration map induces an isomorphism between the h1 of s1 with r. Oh, phew, that was a lot. But don't worry, we won't have to do this every time. In the future, the way we're gonna compute cohomology is often via using long exact sequences. In particular, one of the sequences we use most frequently is going to be the Mayavatoris sequence, and we'll actually use that to give another computation of the cohomology groups of the circle. So those are coming up next.